little, a little different, but it's kind of fun. Um, and so we'll, we'll include these. Also, there'll be a couple questions, like I had mentioned, inside the lecture that uh, we'll create a Dropbox for, and you'll just dump them into there. Okay, so just kind of talking about the basic elements of Congress. And one of the things that I think sometimes gets a little bit confusing when we're talking about um, Congress is that you, people use terms and they cross over to explain them. So, for example, it, the, the, obviously we have two houses, okay? And, uh, in fact, let's just, uh, let's just turn to this um, element here. And, and we can kind of talk about it. But when we talk about the two houses and, and we talk about them together, sometimes people will say the legislative branch, which is very fair, a good description. So people, sometimes people will say Congress when they're referring to both. Again, it makes it a little, little hard because sometimes when you're talking about congressmen or congresswoman, that's members of the House um, and not uh, the, the group as a whole. So. It's just kind of a weird dynamic that we use this term Congress to describe sometimes both houses and sometimes just the House of Representatives. But I'll try and be clear clear with it. Obviously, in this example here, I'm using Congress to refer to both um, and uh, just kind of give us a little bit of the demographics. And this is our current status. Um, and uh, one of the things that you'll notice uh, right away is that uh, we are a little limited in our representation amongst females. Um, there's been improvements here, which is probably what's kind of uh, even more unique about this is that we still are a long ways away um, from having equality there, male, female, in, in our representation. You know, typically people think of congressmen as, you know, if, you, if you, I said, hey, describe a congressman, you'd probably say old white male, to be honest. And, and so, you know, this is, you see a little bit of change. The other thing that's worth noting here is the party affiliation, and this has caused a little bit of our problems we've had in our government over the last uh, little bit, but uh, certainly, um, you know, at least at this point, our breakdown, you can see that the Republicans have the majority in the House of Representatives, a pretty significant one, 50 uh, members, and then on the uh, Senate side, it's a small majority for the Democrats, and a, a couple independents in there, one um, tends to, to work with the Democrats, one tends to work with the Republicans uh, when it comes to voting and other things, but that kind of gives you an idea of uh, the breakdown. Now, what I would like you to do, the first question I'm going to ask right here, and this is the first question I'd like you to answer, and again, we're going to put these into the Dropbox this time, is I want you to tell me uh, who the two senators are from California, senators, and I want you to tell me what makes them unique. And then the second question I'm going to have you do at this point is to look up the district that you live in, um, what's the, what they're numbered, and then who is the representative from your district. So um, very simple. Again, you could type that into Google and find both those things, but uh, just go ahead and look up who the two senators are in California, what makes them unique, and then uh, also the representative from your congressional district in California. Uh, you can look those things up. Moving on, you kind of get uh, some membership elements here. Um, the terms of office. Uh, for the uh, House of Representatives is two years, so we elect those people every two years. For the Senate, it's a six-year cycle. So you're in office a little bit longer. Um, the salaries themselves are determined by the membership, um, although you can understand that, uh, especially certainly in today's economy, that you know, if they were to give themselves large pay raises or vote those in, the, the members of our society might be a little mad about that and vote them out. The other thing that's kind of interesting about the salary part is that whatever salary they vote in, they are required, that, that money doesn't go into effect until after the next election cycle. So again, they built that in to kind of create a little pressure to make sure that uh, they weren't voting these huge raises in. There are certainly some members of the Senate and of the House of Representatives that don't take their salary. They'll, they'll roll it back in. They were wealthy coming into the job and they just don't feel like it's appropriate. Um, or they may uh, shift that money and give it to their staff, things of that nature. Two major leaders uh, that are worth uh, mentioning here as well uh, because of the role they play. Uh, the first one is uh, Speaker of the House, a guy named John Boehner. He's from the state of Ohio and he is a Republican. And uh, Obviously, there's been um, a lot of conflict in our current administration between Boehner and uh, President Barack Obama. 
And uh, the ability for those two, uh, the speaker and the president, especially when they're op opposing parties to get along or to be able to negotiate is critical. And that has been a little bit of a struggle. On the other side, in the Senate, the Senate Majority Leader is Harry Reid. Now, Harry Reid's a Democrat from Nevada, and, uh, and so his, his viewpoints are a little different than uh, the Speaker's uh, viewpoints, get being a Democrat. And so he's been a little bit better about working with Barack Obama. Uh, but again, his majority, uh, it becomes uh, sometimes problematic. Um, so you've got what we call a divided government. You've got at least one House of Congress. Uh, that's primarily Republican, uh, and a president that's the other party, in this case, Democrat. Anytime that occurs, we have divided government. Qualifications uh, for a member of the House of Representatives is uh, 25. Um, you have to have been a citizen for seven years, and you have to be a legal resident of the state you live in, but you do not have to be a member or live in the district that you run. Um, so, for example, in California, um, if you lived in Fresno, uh, you could run for Congress in any district, any of the 53 districts that we would have uh, located throughout the state. Um, this is kind of a weird rule. It's, it's built into the Constitution that that's true. Again, it seems it's a little bit um, much to have someone live in their district, especially in a state like California with as many districts as we have. Generally, the people live in the vicinity of their district. So... Um, you know, it's not a requirement to live there, but they'll live nearby. For a senator, uh, 30 years old, you have to be a citizen of the United States for nine years, and then you also have to be a legal resident of the state. Now, again, I point this out because, um, you know, we have certainly had uh, people that run for House and Senate that became legal residents of the state, and, and how does, what does that work? How do, you just, how do you determine that? And, and again, this is an example of federalism. The states decide um, who is a resident of their state. So how long do you have to live there? Be a resident of Oregon or a resident of Washington? Well, that's up to Oregon and Washington. And so they determine that. Um, I, I always think Hillary Clinton is kind of a unique one. Hillary Clinton was a senator in New York prior to becoming Secretary of State or before she ran for president. And we know the Clintons were from Arkansas. And then she lived in Washington, D.C. And so how is she... A resident of New York. Well, again, whatever requirements they had for her living there, um, they decided to. Uh, what they, you know, that's how they that's how they built it in. So, with that being said, I would like you to look up what what are the qualifications for residency of the state of California. Um, this might be important too um, if you're thinking about where you want to go to college. Um, and, you know, if you want to go to college out of state, what do you have to do to be a resident of that state so you can get in state tuition? Those kind of things are, are important to a college student. So I want to look up the state of California. And then also, if you had a uh, college that was in another state, I just want you to pick some university, the public school, that you may would be interested in attending. And then I want you to look up for the residency of that state, too. So that'll be our third question. Um, residence, what's the residency rules for California? And then what's the residency rules for another state where you may consider going to college? Um, the representatives uh, themselves, the, the members of the House of Representatives, are handled uh, through something called reapportionment. So how do we decide you know, which state has how many? Well, we take a, a count, a census, um, and it's done every 10 years. We just finished ours, and uh, so we went through this process of, of counting them up. California, I mentioned, has 53 members. This is, again, purely based on population. Um, I'm going to show you a couple other states here because they're early in the election cycle, and so, you know, we get caught up in them. But New Hampshire, who, again, is the, the host of the New Hampshire primary, uh, they only have two. Uh, so, again, a fairly small state. And then Iowa, another early, uh, port, uh, you know, the Iowa caucus that comes early in our election cycle, they have five. So those are two states that have a, a big role in determining who is going to be president, and, frankly, they don't have much representation. There are seven states that have one Representative, And so this will be our fourth question. I want you to find out what are the four states, or excuse me, the seven states that only have one representative. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is something called redistricting. And uh, this is the process of once you um, determine how many representatives you're going to have, then we have to go about the process of laying out our districts. And this has been problematic in the past um, because of uh, different elements to this and, and the kind of political uh, change you can make by the way that you lay out the districts. And so 
there's this uh, process called uh, gerrymandering. And again, this uh, is an old um, term uh, that was used when a uh, group tried to manipulate the districts and so that they could maintain power uh, for their particular political party. And again, you can see um, they use this drawing over here on the right. This is actually uh, um, Maryland. And uh, Maryland had some kind of funky districting set up to, to try and maintain power for one political party. And so um, they, they just, again, it was a term they used and they drew it into kind of this vicious looking creature <laughs> that's over there uh, on, the, on the bottom right. How do you do this? How could you gerrymander a district at this point? Um, well, we have a few rules uh, that are out there, but you can manipulate them. And so the rules are established that the district should be geographically unique. In other words, they can't have, um, you know, they can't jump borders. You know, they have to be next to each other. Uh, so that's important. Um, you have to make sure that they're uh, somewhat equivalent in size as far as total population. There's usually rules that the state will provide that says they have to be within, you know, generally it's about 10 or 20,000 people of population. So you can't have one district that has a million people and another that has 300,000. That doesn't work. Um, and then after that, again, it just kind of depends on the state. And so um, some ways that you could do this is, uh, and, and I always use Orange County for as an example. You know, Orange County is primarily Republican. However, there are some pockets that are pretty heavily Democratic. And so, um, you know, the Republicans, if they wanted to, uh, could take that, those pockets of Democrats and divide them amongst all the districts in Orange County. For example, parts of Santa Ana, parts of Garden Grove, uh, basically with Loretta Sanchez. She's the one Democrat uh, that, that has won a seat uh, that's a Democrat in, in Orange County, but maybe they could take her district and split it up amongst all the others, and so it would make it very difficult for her to continue to be reelected. The other way to do it would be to sort of spread everybody, uh, or to put everybody into one. So, uh, for example, again, I've got the examples reversed here, but in Orange County, um, you know, we've sort of achieved this. The Republicans control all the districts except for one, and so, um, you know, they put Loretta Sanchez's uh, constituency in that one space and so the Democrats only get one uh, particular location in Orange County. So, so again, th there's just a way to go about the process that I'm using. I'm reversing this on you, but, but the idea could work either for either political party. Okay, um, what I would like you to do now at this point is, um, and we've got our questions, you can drop those into the Dropbox for me, but I'm going to show you, we're going to do a little game uh, based on this and the assignment is uh, listed on there and the website's on there but I'm going to show it to you just so you kind of get a feel uh, for what, what, what we want to do and, and again I told you guys to go to this website the redistrictinggame.org and uh, so you're going to see in here when you, when you go through the process it, and you got to click on play the game to get to this and, and again it's very very easy to get to what I would like you to do is go to the partisan gerrymander and uh, so in this case what you're going to do is try and make sure that you are helping out your political party and then uh, you can click on basic if you go to the more advanced it becomes a little bit more challenging but I want you to just do the basic so you get a feel for it okay so click on basic in, in my computer um, it won't launch the game directly so I have to click on this link that's there and here we go okay so um, they give you a little quote here click to continue we're gonna choose our party let's say you choose the Republican Party okay and so um, again they kind of have funny names um, Libby Rawl liberal is the party head for the Democrats and Connor conservative or conservative is the Republican um, but what you're gonna do is you want to make sure that your Republican Party controls the state legislature you're gonna follow your party heads instructions and read the redraw the districts to help your party okay um, so you're gonna be in charge of this process so you click to continue Okay, and so now you can kind of go through the process of figuring out the best way um, to do this. And, and so if you come up to the top here, it, it tells you a little bit about the um, people who have run in your state. Okay, you can see in here, <laughs> they're kind of, again, they're, they're sort of funny names, and they'll tell you a little bit about their, their characters and tell you what political party they're in, okay? And so um, then it tells you over here the directions about what's going on, two Democrats, two Republicans. Since we control the state legislature, we have an option to help our party at the national level by germinating a new Republican district. And so what you want to do is you want to try and take the Republican Party and give them three districts they control instead of two. 
okay? So that's what you're doing. And then all you do is you can click, the red dots represent Republicans and the blue dots represent Democrats. And so what you wanna do is you wanna start manipulating these populations so that you could maybe take away some of the control of the Democratic Party. So like for example, up here you can see um, that uh, our friend here, Auto Worker, okay, has a, a small majority of uh, Democrats in his favor, and you can see how, how where all these blue dots are here. And all you would do to change the districts, and again, I'm not going to necessarily do it correctly because you you may get a very similar looking game, is you click on it and then you drag it, and it changes. You can see how the lines shifted there, okay. And then now we took it. Now Auto Worker's mad, okay, because he lost some votes, but. But your boy up here, Mark Etz, is a little upset uh, because he's got even even numbers here. So again, you're going to try and manipulate this map uh, to make sure that you um, get the numbers you want for each of your things. And again, you're trying to take over one of the districts from geriatrics or auto worker. Okay. Then, and once you finish that, it'll it'll say um, it'll give you the chance to to click on yes, I'm I'm ready to go. You get a little bit of feedback. You submit for approval, and then you're going to get like this little. Um, it's called a, a button. That's the thing I want you to print out. Okay, you got to print out that button and bring it into me. Okay. Again, just kind of a fun little thing where you can look at some districts here and play around with it and see how it is somewhat difficult to get this to work, um, but it's kind of fun. Just a little uh, game you can play on uh, computer. Though. Okay. That will be the uh, finish of this lecture.